to episode 13 of Bridget's She Shed. Of course, I'm Bridget, and I'd like a big, big, big welcome to all of my um, returning viewers and a big welcome and hello and thank you to any new viewers. It Today is Wednesday, November 30th. It's the last day of the month. Um, I'm just coming back from uh, a short vacation. Went to California for five days for Thanksgiving uh, here in the U.S. We celebrated Thanksgiving last week, and so I had a wonderful time um, with my mom and some other family members, seeing them. It was wonderful. I will um, have a couple of clips of my trip coming back home. Did some car knitting, not as much as I thought I was going to get done. But anyway, I hope all of you who um, did celebrate Thanksgiving that you had a wonderful time. Um, the holidays coming up can be quite challenging for uh, a lot of us. I know as a crafter, maker, knitter, crocheter, it, the holidays can um, really put a lot of undue stress trying to do all that gift knitting. Um, this year, I have really cut back on my gift knitting. A lot of it has to do with I've been working on other projects from the upcoming um, birth of my great-grandson, Little Nugget. So a lot of my gift-giving energy has been towards making for um, things for him. But just in general, um, you know, cut yourself some, some grace. I love giving uh, handmade things as opposed to sales. I didn't do any Black Friday sales at all for yarn or whatever. I didn't do anything at all. Matter of fact, um, I totally went off the grid while I was gone for those five days and it was fantastic. So sometimes you just kind of have to, you know, unplug. So don't regret not missing anything. I'm trying to do a um, bit more knitting from my stash since I have more than what I could ever uh, knit or crochet in a lifetime. So I'm looking more into that, trying to find projects that I can do more for that. Um, one thing that I did do over the um, weekend, long weekend, was I tried out the new um, app, knitting app, uh, Knit Companion. And I don't know if some of you are familiar with that. If you're not, you can go to knitcompanion.com or um, I know Stacy with Very very Pink Knits um, has great tutorials on it. Um, when I originally heard about it actually from uh, the Love and Stitches podcast, Nitty Natty, at that time, it was about a year ago, it was only for uh, those with uh, an Apple device. Now they've expanded, and for those of you with an Android device, you can now get Knit Companion. There are like three tiers. There's a free tier, which is the one that I'm working with right now, which is their basic. Then there's one called Essential, and then there's a higher one than that. And they come with like, you can pay, and you get different things more advanced things as you pay. So before I wanted to pay for anything and make that kind of commitment, I just wanted to try out the basics. And so far, um, I'm really loving it um, for what I like to do where I didn't have to print out my pattern when I was um, traveling and I could bring it up on my, uh, at the time on my phone and I could track things like um, what row I was on and it has these row counters and I could write notes. The only thing that I discovered that I don't care for, and I don't know if it's something the way that I set it up or if this is something that you have to pay for. Um, when I got back home and got my tablet, the information, it didn't sync between the, 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 the two devices. So that's something that... Um, I wasn't too happy with because I pretty much use my tablet when I'm at home. And so I had to manually go in and transfer all of the information and stuff that I had, um, that I had put on my phone device. 
So I'm curious, have, are any of you out there using Knit Companion? Is there something that I'm not doing correctly? Or maybe, you know, you can advise me or let me know. What do you, what do you think of it? Um, let me see if I can just bring it up here. But what I like about it is you can, patterns that you have uh, downloaded onto Ravelry, you can go in and access that pattern and bring it over into Knit Companion. And I thought that was really, that's really cool. So here is um, it has a ruler project timer to tell you how long that you've been working on stuff. Um, okay. So this is one of the projects that I was working on. I don't know if you can see it, but that's how it looks. And then, um, let's see. Yeah. So these numbers over here on the side over here are um, row counters and markers. So that's pretty good. So you get all of the pages of your pattern up there and you just click on those. And then you can, has a highlighter which you can move up and down. And um, it was pretty, I found that pretty neat. So that, you know, I don't have to waste um, paper and I'm able to write, you know, my notes down because, you know, I normally keep that on, on the paper. So I thought that was good. The only other thing is that I would have liked to have been able to do is be able to highlight the size that I was working on as I was going through the pattern and reading. So again, that may be a feature that you have to pay for, or I haven't learned how to do that just yet with the free, okay? But anyway, Knit Companion, knitcompanion.com. Tell me if you're using it, if you've thought about using it, or if you used it, did you like it? Give me some tips on things that, you know, I might not be doing correctly. Um, I want to hear from you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got going. So this is the night before this is Vlogmas Eve. Um, uh, Vlogmas will start on tomorrow, December 1st. And I have some thoughts on that, that I'll talk about a little bit later, but I just wanted to get this episode out. Hopefully it will be up tomorrow. Um, my computer Sometimes has issues when I go to edit and upload. So we'll see. What am I wearing? Okay, first off, I am wearing my very oversized comfy cardigan. It is 68 degrees here in uh, southeastern Arizona in the United States. And for us, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> I know it's not like the snowy places that many of you are... are uh, experiencing right now, but it is cool. So I am wearing, this is called the Campside Cardi. I've talked about this before um, by Alicia Plummer. This was my very first uh, garment and for this year, and I just love it very much. It's full of maker, I won't say errors, but maker, what can I say a good word? Maker, maker textures. Okay, how about that? <laughs> it's full of that, but I don't care. I love it uh, anyway. I especially made it extra large so that I can wrap up in it and be nice and comfy. The yarn that I'm using is um, Barocco uh, Vintage DK, and um, I love this yarn. It's a blend of uh, wool, alpaca, and acrylic, and I think a little bit of nylon. But it's very um, has a very good price point for those of those of you that um, you know want a good deal and you know budget wise. Um, I buy yarn from you know different spectrums on the on the price thing depending on you know where my money is flowing. So definitely this is a good deal. Um, it is machine washable and just uh, you can throw it uh, and lay it flat to dry. I do not machine wash. I um, 
hand wash with wool with my wool soak and then I do put it in the, the dryer on the spin cycle only to get a lot of the water out because it's it'll be so heavy and then I just lay it flat on blocking mats and um, let it dry okay so that's what I'm wearing there and then I am wearing my frogging t-shirt that was part of the collection of uh, design collection for uh, Nitty Natty Natalie of Loving Stitches podcast, and she has these for a limited time only that ended in October. And so um, I got several different t-shirts, but this is the one with the definition on frogging. Okay. And what am I sipping? So for those of you that are new, um, I use terms such as FOs, finished objects, whips, works in progress, and SIPs. And SIPs are um, what most people call their acquisitions. But for me, it's stuff I've purchased and stuff I'm sipping on. So today I just have water in this really cute mug, insulated mug from the Grocery Girls, which is a podcast of two crazy but very talented uh knitters, their sisters out of uh, Edmonton, Canada. So grab your knitting, grab your crocheting, and grab your favorite beverage, hot or cold, and let's talk about some finished objects. Okay. I have one finished object, which was a test knit, and it was socks, and I love, uh, this is the second time, yeah, this is my second test knit for um, Christine Archer, and these are called, I don't think it's been released yet, um, this is called Simply Irresistible Socks, and there's two. But I love the, the heel construction. Let me just grab one. I love the heel construction here. It's just this um, ribbing here. Um, it was a, a one by one for the cuff. And then there's a textured pattern. And then you do this heel construction, which is very, very unique. Um, this I made is in a large, I made this for the hubs and when he tried it on, uh, he's just fell in love with this. It's the best fitting sock out of all the socks that I've made him over the years. And it has a round toe. Uh, let's see. I used a US 1.5, which is a 2.5 millimeter, um, because I'm a loose knitter. I think next time for him, I may go down to a, a one the next time I, I make a pair of these. But this is made using fingering weight yarn. It's Knit Picks Stroll, and it's in their ash colorway. And it just works up really pretty. But that's really nice. So that is my one and only. It's like I said, it's a test knit. Um, I'm sh no, it should be released. I don't know if it was released over. I have to look. If it was released over Thanksgiving uh, weekend. I know we had to have it finished by the 21st so of November. So I think it may be um, released already. But anyway, if give it a try. Okay. So next thing I have are several. Uh oh, several works in progress and my first work in progress is a sock it's a dk sock and let me tell you if you are planning on doing some gift knitting and your recipients likes handmade socks dk socks are the way to go they knit up so quickly and especially if you do a shorty pair and that's what this is this sock is called the four hour sock. And it is by um, 
Lauren Slag Slagley, S L A G L E, Slagle, Slagley. I apologize if I said it wrong, but she's low, part of Lolo Did It. And it literally does take you about four hours. Um, it took me, um, well, I haven't made the second sock. So it took me a little over two hours to do the first sock. And um, let me show you the sock. There is the sock. Isn't it pretty? So this sock, the main color is called um, Blackberry Jam. And that's a DK weight yarn that I got from um, To The Max Yarn Co. They are no longer dying under that brand name. It is now... Um, Frankie Gray Fibers, and they're uh, out of Canada. And Jody Brown, who is actually one of the grocery girls, this is her uh, dyeing company with her daughter. And the contrast color is also a DK weight, and that is from Breaking Yarn, uh, McKaylee with Breaking Yarn. And this colorway is called Jane Margolis. And if you're familiar with the um, Breaking Bad series that was on Jane Margolis. Jane Margolis was a character in um, Breaking Bad. And so when um, McKaylee does her colorways from the characters, the colorways sort of represent the character and the mood of the, the character. So it's, it's black, but um, it's really, really, really nice quick pattern. It's got some, it is a paid for pattern, so I don't want to go into detail, but it's got some interesting um, cast on and heels that you do. And the heel, I can't tell you that, the heel is called a Dutch turn heel, which I've never done before. And it was very interesting. Um, let me see, what else? Oh, I use, this is a size medium. This is for me, or it might just go, they might just go to my sister. I don't know. We have the same, almost the same size foot. So it might go there. Um, and I used a US3, which is a 3.25 millimeter. And let's see, what else can I say about this sock? So I will be starting on the second sock. I have my little row markers here or round markers to tell me every 10 rounds so that um, I can match up the second sock but excellent way to use up um, fingering weight if you hold it double you will get a pretty much close to a DK weight so if you've got yarn that you want to quickly use up to make a gift DK weight um, it's the best way to go or using two strands of fingering, you will get a DK weight. So that is one of my whips. Okay. The next whip that I have is hanging out in my three by the sea, optimal opt bag. Boy, I must need some more water. And, uh, let's see, I need to put this on a blocker here. Do that right quick. So how's everyone doing? Is everyone okay? Good. I just love, I just love this format. I just love doing this, you know. I didn't think I, I, I would, but um, I am really, 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 really enjoying spending time, uh -oh, spending time talking to you all about my making, reading the comments that I'm getting back. It's really cool. Um, 
so I'm loving it very much. I'm really struggling here. I should have had this on a on on the blocker. I'm not prepared. I should have had this way had this on the blocker before recording. This is what happens. Normally I record during the day. This time I'm recording in the evening because I remembered that tomorrow is December 1st. And it's like, oh no, I gotta get something out before Vlogmas starts. So here we go. Here is the sock. Isn't that pretty? And this is called the Magic Heel Sock. So again, it's a weird uh, heel construction using ribbing for the heel. This is um, the Magic Heel Sock. It is also a paid for pattern and it is by uh, Judy Jewel and she's the Autumn Acorn. She's also known as the Autumn Acorn. And um, the yarn that I used uh, is from, and I believe I showed you guys once the yarn as one of my sips, is from lollipop yarn and it's the wine o'clock um colorway and it's got five stripes in it and it came with this is the this is the yarn here and I just love these colors. And then it came with the mini, which is also one of the stripes. So um, this is what I have left to use to start the second sock, which I will be starting that very soon. So it's got some ribbing at the top, two by two ribbing at the top. and stocking it so one thing i liked about this is that it's um kind of a vanilla but with a little twist to it it made um i got a lot of uh knitting done uh, in the car because from arizona to california it's about an eight hour drive i did not do any knitting on the way to california um but I did do knitting on the way back. And so I've actually got a picture of me in the car knitting that I might stick in somewhere, maybe at the end. But, um, so this is a really, really, really cool pattern. And I love the colors, I love the striping. And I just did just a round toe. So the hubs tried it on uh, right before the podcast. You can see I still got my strings and stuff that I gotta weave in. And, uh, he loved it. He said the fit was great. I think though, if I make another pair, I may add some extra rows, maybe another five to 10 rows on the heel portion. Um, it's not quite deep enough, but it may, I don't know, it may stretch. That's one of the things about these heels is that they're good for, if you don't know the size of a person's, um, you know, foot measurements and all you have is a shoe size there. Um, the crafting council has numbers, you know, for that to tell you the shoe size. So this is really great. It's cause you don't have to worry about, you know, heel placement. It sort of just will find your heel and conform, you know, to your heel. But I think on the leg, I would, I probably would have needed to add maybe just a little bit more, make it just a little bit deeper. So I might do that the next time I make a pair. Okay, so that is my um, second whip. Okay, And um, I used a US 1 2.25 millimeter uh, for that sock. And that sock's combination was, it's a little thicker, it's a, a, a 80 20 
uh, superwash and nylon blend. So it's a little, little plumper. So the socks is a little, a little fuller, which is nice. Very nice cush. And the hub said that they were very comfortable. So I want to get that pair done and um, gift those to him for an early birthday Christmas present. He's a December baby, so um, he normally gets socks for his birthday. So that will be one of his birthday presents. Okay, moving right along. It's time for my sips. Oh boy, that's so refreshing water. It's so good for you. Okay, so for my sips, um, I'm so spoiled. The hubs uh, gave me an early Christmas present and um, I purchased, uh, well, he purchased for me because he saw it and he liked it. He purchased for me a kit for the Andrea Mowry's uh, new sweater. It's called uh, Trinigan, Trinigan. That, hopefully that focuses. And um, it is made with uh, spin cycle yarn. Spin cycle, I guess, has come out with a new base and it's called the Trine base and um, their Dream State base. Um, I've been dying to knit with some spin cycle, but it just has really been out of my price point. And um, Dinah and Pam of The Knitting Place, which is a, a podcast that um, I watch, they are owners of The Knitting Place, which is a yarn store out of Long Island, New York. And they have put some kits together with the spin cycle yarn that Andrea Maori um, uh, made the uh, original sweater out of. One thing I can say, though, um, that I love about the Andrea Maori, I, even though I haven't made any of her designs yet, but I do watch her podcast. I'll spin if I want to. One thing that I do like about her patterns, I've favored many of them, is that she gives yarn substitutions. So if you can't afford what she made it originally out of, she gives a great heads up and substitution on other yarns. Well, the Knitting Place does the same thing. So they had kits made up out of the yarns that uh, Andrea Maori uh, used to make the uh, the cardigan. And then um, she gave they gave kits that were at a... Uh, substituting some of the yarns out at a lower price point. And that's the kit that I bought. So my main color, instead of being in the spin cycle trying, which is the, the main color, this solid sort of blue here, semi, semi solid. Um, they have this yarn and it's called Moda. And it's a uh, hundred percent wool, lana marina. I entrefina e mantrega. I have to look that up. I don't know what type of wool that is, but this is color number two forty six. And it is not itchy. It is so soft and so squishy and plump. Because this sweater is to be made out of, I think it's a DK weight. Or is it worsted? Hmm. I'm not sure. It's either DK or worsted. I think it's worsted weight. And with the spin cycle uh, dream state for the little um, pockets you see in there of like, looks like color work. I just love the sleeves on that, those oversized sleeves. 
And this pattern is very size inclusive. Let me just bring it up. Bring it up here on Ravelry. So yes, it's worsted weight and it is size inclusive. It goes from a finished buff circumference of 43.5 inches to 74 inches. And that's 110.5 to 188 centimeters. So um, the recommended ease is 15 to 10 inches or 38 to 25.5 centimeters. So it is very, very loose fitting. And I like loose fitting, comfy, hence my, card, my cardigan that I'm wearing. So anyway, I substituted out. So for the portion that looks like color work, um, this is knit from the bottom up seamlessly, except for the underarms. And it says the body and yoke are worked flat and the sleeves are picked up and knit in the round. And the color work is achieved using the mosaic knitting method. Okay. I'm thinking that's not quite sure what the mosaic knitting method is, but I'm thinking that it's kind of like where you use one color, then you drop and then you just pick up the other color. And that would be with this. And this is called the Family Jewels. Is that coming up? There it goes. That's this colorway. And it's 100% American wool superwash. So that's how those two will look together. And that was my present from one of my presents, Christmas presents, early presents from the hubs. Okay. My second, can't wait to get that on the needles. My second um, present was a bag from um, Hohi Locatelli that I've been wanting from for quite some time and could never find it and i found it on the lola bean yarn co website and it's a weekender bag and it's called um the model it's huge i used it um on my trip and I was able to put all of my project bags inside of here. It was great. It has um, a zipper here on the outside, which is nice. Mm. And it's made with leather. This is all handcrafted there in uh, Argentina. The inside is huge. And there's a zipper pocket here. turn it around there's another pocket here along with a along with a hook and it is just fabulous so it has these leather straps and then it has the adjustable shoulder strap this was great I love this bag. This color is called tan. The one I wanted originally was the avocado color green, but they were sold out of that. So I got this tan and it's just absorbing the oils and stuff from off of my hands. And it's just beautiful. I am so happy with it. So this is another Christmas gift from the hubs. He knows I love my knitting. All right, so another sip that I actually got, I saw this pad, saw this book being advertised or not being advertised, I guess, mentioned in a podcast called um, with Mars of Hey Brownberry, and it's the Charming Colorwork Socks. And this was right after I had finished my first Colorwork Socks that I did for uh, Halloween. 
Okay, so we had a little technical difficulty there, so I have to start the camera again. Sorry about that, but it's real life. As I was saying, this book I saw on uh, the Hey Brownberry uh, podcast right after I did the Halloween socks that had the little ghost on them. And um, this is a great little book. It is just chock full of different types of color work socks. And the one that got caught my eye, and I've started to mark off socks. I have them by seasons, like with holidays and different things of uh, that nature. And this is the pair that um, that I liked, which is the coffee break. And I'll just show you the picture. I thought those were so cute. So I think I'm going to try my hand at, at these sometime in the in the new year to so I can learn more with color work but so I picked this up I think off of Amazon so it's a great I think it's a great book if you're into color work it's great if not it's got uh, wonderful step-by-step -step, uh, information not step-by-step -step, but wonderful tips uh, in here on how to help you through the learning how to do color work so great book by Charlotte Stone. Okay. So, um, that was my sips. My next sip kind of ties into Vlogmas. So, I have never ever pur purchased a advent calendar. So this year I've purchased two. I've received one so far and this one is by three by the sea and this is their um this is their 25 day let's see if this will get it right uh, this was their 25 day stitch marker advent and you can add yarn to it uh if you wanted to and i did and the theme was It's a Wonderful Life, which happens to be my favorite Christmas movie of all with Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed. I love it so much that I've worn out DVDs and had to buy new DVDs. And it was a family tradition when the kids were growing up that we watch it on uh, Christmas Eve. And they've even carried that tradition over into with their kids. Um, so, yeah, I love that movie. It's a, it's a great movie on faith, hope, and um, being kind to others. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a wonderful life. So anyway, here is my advent. I have not opened it. I just unsealed it today. I've had it for maybe about two weeks now. So they did a really great job with shipping considering all the problems they've been having in Florida with weather. So on tomorrow, I'm going to open this up and open up the first stitch marker for the, um, for the advent. And I will record that. Now, my Vlogmas may be a little different from what you normally see on other podcasts because I really don't have a lot going on. So mine's will, mine will probably be like just short reels of me opening up my, my, um, my stitch marker advent and that's it. So you may find it a little boring. Um, I'm sorry. I just... This is my first time doing this, so I'm just trying to see what's comfortable. Plus, my um, editing equipment and everything, it's very slow. And I don't know. 
Bridget, she said, might be getting a new computer for Christmas. I don't know if what's what the deal is. So if you have any editing tips, please put those in because it takes me nearly 24 hours to upload um, from my camera to my editing software, then up to um, YouTube. And I know that's just ridiculous. But anyway, um, I digress. So anyway, with the Vlogmas, um, like I said, they may be a little different from what you normally see. Um, but I will try and tape at least me opening and showing you the stitch marker that I got for that day. So it may more be of short reels. Um, as I work on projects, and get something finished, I may include that, you know, in the, in the vlog, but I don't know, 25 days of just showing and, and, uh, a stitch marker might be a little, you know, boring, but Hey, I'm here for you. I'll do it. If you guys want me to do it and I'll do it as long as it feels good and it's bringing me joy. So, and may, I'm thinking that maybe that might be just enough, you know, just a few seconds of seeing, a stitch marker might just be the, the thing that you need to get your joy meter ticking. Okay. All right. Let's see what else. Well, I think that's all I have actually for today. Again, um, thank you so much for being here. If this is your first time, thank you for returning. Um, please be kind to yourself over the holiday season and um, stay healthy and do what brings you joy uh, in your making and I will see you hopefully tomorrow or the day after but it'll be me coming to you in the future from the past I don't know <laughs> but let's just have some fun with it over this holiday season this will be my first year doing this whole holiday thing with the with the podcast so just roll with it okay roll with me all right because i am going to have fun and be joyful all right i love you all very much stay um healthy stay blessed bye for now <laughs>